Hey Echo Online fam, we are so glad you guys are here today. We miss you, we value you, and you're a vital part of our church community, and we are so glad that you're tuning in today. Yes, we are just wrapping up serving at our pop-up pantry, giving away pallets of food to those in need. After today, we will have given away 10,000 pounds of food to Rochester residents in just the last three weeks. All possible because of you, so thank you. That is a ton of food. Well, actually, it's, it's five tons, but no pun, no pun. Um, if you call Echo Home and you're looking to give today, you can do so in two different ways. Head to our website below or text any amount to 84321. It's because of your continued generosity that we've been able to be generous with our community. Yeah, and we want to make sure that you are staying in the loop with all things Echo. Tonight, Sunday, August 30th, we are having Flood Sunday, baptism and bonfire right on the Zumbro River. We cannot wait to celebrate with all those who have decided to make this important next step in their faith. If you're interested in celebrating with us, message us using the email below. We are so close to being able to regather. We're almost certain we will have an option available for you on September 13th, so be praying and be on the lookout. We will have more info for you coming soon. Echo is all about community. Your place, your people, your purpose. If you know that you will be online only for the next few weeks, we highly encourage you to invite someone over. Ask one family or one friend, and when you do, let us know about it. Post and tag Echo so we can be a part of your church space. If you need help getting connected, send us an email. We would love to get you placed in community as we prepare to gather. Yes, and now today's service, it goes there. Like it goes there. There's not a dry eye in the house. So we want to start off on a little lighter note with a little trivia. So if you answer correctly, you'll have a chance to win a prize. Now the question we have for you is, what is on Scott's iPhone? Hmm, be sure to email in your answers to hey at wearetheecho.church. Include your name, number, and address to have the chance to win a prize. We can't wait to hear your answers. Enjoy Echo Online Service. Welcome to Echo Sunday Service. I am so thankful that we are able to reach you today wherever it is that you may be. If you are new to Echo, you can expect today to last around 40 minutes. We're going to start with our amazing Echo Band. Pastor Andy is going to give a message. We'll have a time of reflection, and then we'll wrap up hearing some closing thoughts. Even though Echo is scattered right now, a few of us, we can still gather. We can gather and we can press pause. Pause on work, pause on chores, pause on homework, pause on worries. Pause on all of the distractions that are trying to pull you away from the peace that God is offering you right now. Before we dive in, I wanna read just a bit of scripture from Philippians chapter four, verses eight and nine. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the God of peace will be with you. You can have God's perfect peace right now, but you have to put it into practice. There has to be that, that mental shift, that flip in the mindset. Stop focusing on the things of this world and focus on the heavenly things. Not to say your troubles don't exist or you should just forget them, but instead take your mess and place it at the feet of Jesus. Bring your junk to our sovereign God, our all-knowing, all-powerful, heavenly Father. Say, look, this, this is me. This is my mess right now. But God, but God, I know you are higher. But God, I know your love is right here. Your peace is right here. Your freedom that only you can provide is right here. So will you press pause with me today? Will you put into practice what God has already shown you? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for meeting us right where we are, for diving into our mess, 
to coming into our insecurities, into our selfish nature, and for loving us and loving us abundantly. God, I pray for every listener and viewer right now that they know and feel your victory that they know and feel your freedom, freedom only you can provide, that they know your love and that they feel your peace. In your name we pray.
that has resurfaced in this season, God. I pray for loneliness, depression, anxiety, fear. God, I pray that you will wrap your arms around every single person. I pray against defeat. I pray against weakness. God, you are not only our God, but you are our coach. You are cheering us on. I pray that we can mute all the other noises and we only hear your voice, God. I pray for your scriptures to come alive. I pray for the dry bones. I pray for the lies that people have been listening in this season, that no one cares about them, that no one notices. I pray that we can come out, that we can ask for help. I pray that we see that we are not alone, that we are in this community together, God, that we are better together. I pray for every single person. I just see this image of people coming out of their houses and into the streets, and that we are cheering and we are screaming your name, God, that the world is not gonna win anymore, God. I pray for dreams that have been crushed in this season, God. I pray that you walk through the valleys with these people and you pick them up. I thank you for you being my victorious God. I thank you for the power that you have given me. I thank you for the holiness that you give us, God. I pray that we get angry when we are just giving 
lean into the lies that we take that anger and we give it to you, God. I pray for us not to only look within, that we look out, that we see other people, that we see that they need you, they need love, and they need hope. And if we don't step out, who's going to, God? I pray for Echo Church as a whole in this community, in this city, that you will continue using us and that we can be a vessel. I pray for unity, not division. I pray for miracles in 2020, God. You are not finished. There is purpose in this. And I thank you for this holy moment of reminding us to not quit, to not stop fighting, God, that you are calling us back into the ring and that we hear you as our coach and not the naysayers and the upper bleachers, God, that we hear truth and we hear that you are fighting for us, God. In your holy name, amen. What? Huh. Okay. What the? Today, uh, no matter if you are in this home or you happen to be in your house, uh, it's just great to allow the Lord to work on us. And uh, I feel like I feel like we're just a little bit of dough, right? And and God is the baker, and He's kneading us. You know, and it hurts a little bit, right? Uh, at the same time, we know how good the bread is going to be. Can I hear an amen? So it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, so we are in a series called "What the." Uh, for most of us that are Christian, we think, what the heck? Uh, for the rest of you, you know, who knows? We, we still love you. Uh, but uh, we're really leaning into Jesus's parables. We're leaning into uh, those stories that kind of made people scratch their head. In fact, in, in Matthew uh, 13, if you got your Bibles, you can grab them out. If you got your phones, go ahead and do that. Uh, but in Matt, Matthew 13, or 1333, it says, He told yet another parable. This is Jesus. And it says, The kingdom of heaven is like uh, the yeast that a woman took and mixed in a bushel of flour, then waited until the whole batch of dough rose. I think we just kind of talked about the bread, right, and the kneading and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, but, but, and, and I think in today's world, we're like, yeah, we get it. But in real time with the disciples, a lot of times Jesus' stories just went right over their heads. It was the, it was the head scratcher moment. And so in verse 36, this is what happened. It said, he left the crowds and he went into the house. And when he did, his disciples approached him and more or less said, what do you mean? <laughs> really, what the? What's going on here? Give us a little bit more of that understanding. And, and I think it's because the disciples, man, they chose to follow Jesus. They, they chose to, to, no matter if all their questions had been answered, they were going to follow him no matter what. They had left everything at the shoreline, and they were following Jesus. And Jesus is teaching, and they're going, going please tell us what this means. What's going on? See, I think parables are quite a bit like a, a, a worm on a hook at the end of a fish, hole, uh, fish, fish pole and a fish pole. And, and I believe the parable is in essence looking at us and saying, come and get it. Come and take a bite. Come taste and see. So I just believe this is God's way of engaging us to search until we find. And, and in essence, that's the theme that we're looking at. We're looking at a few, par few, par few parables of Jesus and just saying, Lord, what, what could you say in the element of searching and finding? What could we apply to our life to follow you better, to be a better person in Rochester, to be a better person at our home, to, to reflect who you are even better in no matter whatever situation we find ourselves in? Y'all get what I'm saying here? And so uh, I just want to tell you, uh, the, one of the themes that we're looking at is this concept of searching and finding, and that's something you can see in the kingdom of God. But if you look at, and you look a little deeper, what you find is in the finding, there is joy. Does anybody need a little bit of joy in the house today? I mean, so, so the kingdom of God and his parables begin to present our need to search 
our desire to find, but in that process, there is joy. And so I, I got to thinking about a few things uh, in searching, and I feel like most of Echo Church is full of realtors, and so I just got to relate to them for a moment. I know if you're a realtor and you find that perfect deal, you find that perfect home for that perfect person, man, there's this joy that you experience. You're excited for them and also your commission. Can I hear an amen if you're a realtor? Come on. Uh, I asked Christy, I was like, hey, what kind of story of joy should I share of like finding? And she said, you should talk about how when we go to the beach, you look for shark teeth. And I was like, no, I don't really want to do that because then that really makes it clear how boring of a person I truly am. <laughs> but literally for hours, I will sit again, you know, on the Florida beach. I will look and stare at the, at the ground and until I find this glistening uh, shark tooth. And when I find it, there is joy. It might be small, it might be minimal, but I found it, I searched, and I win. Now, let me just tell you a real story, a real story uh, to tell you really who I am, and you might never come back to echo after this story, but I'm going to share it anyway. Some of you are going to be like, can you take that out of the edit when they watch it online, maybe? Uh, no, uh, when I was in college, I, I had a science class uh, and mind you, I'm going to be a pastor, but I had to take a science class, and I was working till like 3 a.m. at UPS. Uh, can I hear an amen? amen. Yeah, man. And I was working hard just to pay bills, and I would come, come in, I'd fall asleep, and I would wake up, and I'd literally roll out of bed, smell like cardboard, walk into a, a class, have some coffee, and hope that I could stay awake during science. I never did legitimately fell asleep every time. So at the end of the semester, I was anxious. Like, am I actually going to pass the class? I don't know if you've ever been here, but I, when I found out that the grade was posted back in those days on the actual door of my teacher, I had to go find where her office was. And so I, I was searching and eventually found her, and I found the piece of paper with my name on it. And then I had to search that, and I had to look over, and I got a D. And I was so excited. There was so much joy because I, I passed. And some of you are like, what the? This is, this is my pastor? Yes, you should thank God I am not a nurse. And that's a good joke I have for you today. So thank God I'm your pastor and not your nurse. That I barely passed science. Come on, come on. Well, anyway, moving on to the Bible here. Uh, Matthew 13, 44, it says this, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And a man found it. And then he hit it again. Then in great joy, he went out and he sold everything he owned and he, brought, he bought the field. Now there's another parable that comes in right after that in verse 45 and 46 that's, that's kind of tied. It's glued. It, it's got the same kind of thematic uh, vibes going on. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for fine pearls. Ladies, can I hear an amen for fine pearls? Yay. Okay, no amen, just woo. On finding diamonds, diamonds, okay. okay. Uh, on finding one very valuable pearl, he went away, he sold everything he owned, and he bought it. Now, again, we can understand this maybe a little bit uh, more in this modern day context and, and trying to search and find and understanding, like if you, if you found an awesome treasure, yeah, you might go ahead and do that. Uh, but in those days, it was just, it was this what the type of moment where the disciples were scratching their, mo their mind and trying to lean into what exactly is going on. And so let me just teach you just a few things about what was going on in that culture in that day. A man, when he worked in the field, was truly, and you could, was, was probably 90% uh, the case, he was a hired hand from a rich landowner. And so he's working in a field. So put yourself into that position that you are just simply a nine-to-five type of um, whatever you're doing out in the field. And I can just imagine this man as he's sitting there and he's, he's beginning to prepare to put seed in the ground. He's digging up the holes and preparing to do that. And all of a sudden, he hits something. And he realizes, as he's probably surrounded by other people, that he hit something that could be significant. And I could just imagine that as he was responsible for that little plot, that as soon as he found it, as soon as he hit it, 
because he knew there was something significant. Because in those days, what you need to understand is because of the political state of the government and, and because of the, the country and was under siege, it was common that Israel, the Israelites, the Jewish people, would hide treasure in a field and hope to one day reclaim it after the war. And so this story would relate to the people, that they would understand that if they found something that was significant, man, they would hide it again, and then they would go ahead and try to do the right thing to potentially make it their own. See, if the rich, the rich landowner knew it was there, he would have gotten it. So some of you are like, man, there's some ethics that are missing here. I would suggest there probably isn't. It's just this man, this man is wise. He sees an opportunity, and he pushes past the normal. He pushes past his, past his routine, and he goes, you know what? I'm going to get what I just found. He went and searched, and he found, and there was great joy because he realized that the, the rut that he was in, he no longer needed to be in. And I just think there's some people in here. There's some people that are watching at home. You are in a rut. And today is the day, as Christy just prayed, that God wants to get you out of that routine. He wants to get you out of that rut. He wants to get you out of that dark place and bring you joy. Can I hear an amen? amen. So this guy's a normal, a normal dude. Uh, the next story is a story about a merchant that sold pearls. Man, he was kind of maybe a little bit more middle class. He, he might have been high class, but he knew that, and I, and I kind of imagine that this same man, the same man that once found this treasure in the field now has become a merchant. Just think about that progression. That he was once blind to what was in the ground, but now he has it. He owns something, and now God's called him to be, uh, to be honest, to be willing to use what he has given him, to be faithful with the treasure that he's found. And this, now this man has become a merchant. And again, this is me and my, my observation. This is in my kind of uh, imagination. Now he's searching because he knows that if he found a treasure in a field, he knows he can find a treasure elsewhere. And he knows that there's something more. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you this. In the kingdom of God, I don't think we should ever be satisfied. We should, also, we, we should always be leaning into God, realizing that he wants to do more than you could ever imagine. Yeah. He wants to give you more than you could ever dream of. But it's going to take this heart to search until you find. And then when we find, let's be joyous. Let's be people where even though we're muffled, we're not muted. Yes. So this is what I think what's going on. And, and let me just read you a few commentators, uh, just so you know it's not just my opinion. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a theologian. He says, the kingdom of God is so valuable that it's worth sacrificing anything to gain it. Another guy, and, and thank God I don't have his last name. His name is Snodgrass. He says, the, he's super wise, though. I wish I had his brain. Uh, the problem with most of us is that we would like, we would like a little kingdom as an add-on. We would like the kingdom of God as just a little bit of an add-on to the rest of our lives. We want to hedge our bets and he says this, you cannot hedge your bets with the kingdom. This par parable urges us to abandon what we thought the focus of our life should be and, the focus, and put our fo focus exactly on God and what God wants to do in his kingdom. I've got this image of us sitting at the edge of the cliff and God leaning in and say, will you jump? Are you willing to leap? Are you willing to take a risk? Do you want to go on an adventure? I think that's where we are, Echo Church. doesn't matter if we're gathering in here or you're at your home. God is saying, will we push past and will we follow him to step into the kingdom of God that he desires for Rochester? He desires for your home. He, and then let's be honest, where he desires in the state of your mind as we're struggling through this difficult time. So here's the deal. I think there's three reasons why we will not jump. It starts with three R's. I know you missed that. I know you do. What's, what's the term? When I put all these R's or I make acronym, uh, what is it? Alliteration. Here it is. Okay, so everybody remembers. I believe we do not jump because we recoil or we're stuck in routine or we're too stuck into our own reason. See, I think we recoil in the moment that we're put at the cliff and we're, 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 we're put at this decision moment with Jesus. When we're put at a, 
a time when we're put into a situation where we might be hearing the Holy Spirit, we might be feeling the leading of Jesus to step out and take a risk, to, to speak up so someone might step into something more, that they might find a treasure. I think that is a moment where we begin to recoil. I mean, I gotta be honest, man. When all this started six months ago, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know if I should leave or I should stay. I didn't know if I should speak up or I should be quiet. But I understand now that we were not meant to recoil. We were not meant to, to hesitate. We we're not to operate in fear. We're not allowed, we shouldn't be allowed to just worry uh, that we just need to make all the right decisions. I believe that in the kingdom of God, there's just gonna be sudden, sudden step outs where we just gotta do what we gotta do. And if it's the wrong decision, so, so be it. Let's ask for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be a church that's active than the one that recoils. The second is routine. And that's what I miss in this season the most is routine because I love my rut. I love my lazy boy. I love my nine to five. I love my guarantee. But I want to tell you this is some of us, we're so concerned about our financial future. We're so concerned about what might happen to us and our comfort. And I just want to tell you this is that your nine to five is not your provider. Jesus is. God is your provider and he's there with you. He's with, he's for you and he's going to fight. And I believe that's what the church is meant to be for as well. I love how we, we end the service and we ask people to give, but if you aren't able that you were to ask, and that's what the power of the local church can be for you. So let us step out of our routine. Let's not be so stuck to our comfort. And then lastly, it's reason. Man, I <laughs> think about that worker. He's sitting in the ground or he's working the ground, he finds something, then all of a sudden he acts as if he doesn't, he throws the seed and he moves on to keep planting that day. And, and then all of a sudden, he may never come back to the job. And then all of a sudden there's rumors that he's selling everything, that he's taking these unreasonable steps and people don't really understand what's going on because he pushed past reason. I think this is a season where we should take people's advice at the, same, at the same time, there are certain things that aren't gonna be reasonable, that God is calling us to be the church. He's calling us to step out and he's calling us to look beyond our normal, to look what people expect of us and simply lean into God and just say, God, here I am. I think of two stories. I think of Jesus coming alongside the, the lake where his disciples were fishing. And he simply said this, Will you drop your nets and will you follow me? I mean, talk about it. I mean, that is not reasonable. And then I think about that moment where that rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said, how may I inherit the kingdom of God? And he said this, sell everything. Give it to the poor and come follow me. It was so unreasonable. What the man did is he turned around and he walked away sad. God is not asking us to be reasonable. He's calling us to be obedient. And I just want to dare you to begin to ask God to open up your eyes. See, I think this is where we're at. There's, th there's three situations. Number one, we're blind. Number two, our eyes have been opened to the treasure that God wants to give us. Or number three, we've positioned ourselves like the merchant to search and find the pearl of great worth. A couple years ago, I walked into a meeting. And just before I walked into that meeting, these two scriptures were given to me. And I was resonating in it. What was significant about that meeting was I walked in that meeting and I was saddened by the news. I was in essence rejected for an opportunity. But the whole time as I drove home, that next month, the next two months, months, I had this, I had these scriptures imprinted in my heart and my soul. That when a man finds a treasure in his field, he should be so willing to sell everything to find it. And you know what that one little treasure was? It was Echo Church. You know what I'm saying? Like, so in the moment, it hurts, but in eternity, it's worth it. And that's who God is calling us to be.
He's calling us to be the man that operates without reason at moments. He calls us to be the woman to step out of our rut and our routine. He's calling us to be the people to not hesitate, to not fall back, but to be and uh, to move forward. And here's the truth. We can't do this on our own. <laughs> I've tried. We can only do this with Jesus. And we understand there are some people that are watching today. You don't know what it means to have a relationship with God. And today we want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus. God sent his son, an unreasonable calling to come live amongst us, to feel what we felt, to understand and think the way we think, and then lay his life down for people that fail. <laughs> unreasonable. But at the same time, he steps in and he wants to have a relationship with you because of his son and what happened on the cross. We can do that. And we believe that we can start a relationship with Jesus with just a simple prayer. And we want to invite you to pray along with us today as you start following Jesus today. Can we pray? Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions and answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived, you died, and you rose again, all with us in mind. I accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. And everybody said, His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. And
those words, when you hear he is for you, that is for you. Receive that, man. He is for you. He's for us. We are in this together. And I've been thinking about, really, since Christy prayed, we need community, right? We've got to be in this together. Totally forgot about my mask. We are in this together, right? We are God has called us to be a family and be supportive and be through this. And I think for the last however many days or however many months, I don't know about you guys, but it feels alone. And I think about the fact that I have a lot of friends and I have a lot of people that are close. And I think about those that don't. And if I feel this way, how does everybody else feel? He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. I used to believe that worship was a type of song or it was a part of a service. And as I've tried to know God more and, and be challenged more, I'm realizing that it's, it's much more than that, right? It's, it's our hearts and our everydays. It's, it's, what, it's what we're pursuing in all things. And one of the ways that we've chosen, one of the ways that God has called us to worship is by giving. And we have made that a spiritual act of worship, right? It's a sacrifice. It's something we step out. And here at Echo, we do it a couple ways. You can give online. You can text. Uh, God is doing big things. And we are on the horizon of huge things as far as I'm concerned. And we are so grateful for your continued support and encouragement. Over the next, you know, I, I just want to challenge you in something. So we all have this thing in our pocket. And I was challenged by somebody who uh, has been doing this really well. You all have contacts, right? You have tons of people in here. And I'm just wondering who in your life needs to hear from you? Who, who out there needs to be seen? Who out there do you need to be seen by? And I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes use this as an excuse to not do something or the virus or whatever else. But be seen see others, be proactive and let God move in an awesome way. Echo, you are awesome and we love you and we can't wait for what's next. Have an awesome week.